Welcome, ladies. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good, thank good, good afternoon, you. everyone. Hi, everyone. Now, folks, please show them some love. <laughs> show them some love. Because you, I'm sure you all know that it's not um, it's no joke coming on live and then being vulnerable and talking. So please, I need to see the love, the hugs. Mm. And I'm sending you guys virtual hugs. Oh. And blue kisses to you. <laughs> so yes, back, I can see some people have started. Yes, they're showing you love. Mm. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Okay, so today we're talking about um, the challenges young ladies face today in the 21st century. But before we go into the conversation, I would like both of you to kindly introduce yourselves, tell us what you do, and yeah. Um, Ife, do you want to start? Sure. Um, my name is Ife. I am currently working as a software engineer, and I also do some presenting on the side. Thank you. Uh, Tundun? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Tundun, and I am currently doing the bar school. Um, so qualifying to become a barrister and also working freelance at an NGO. Okay, let me ask, before we again go into the conversation, Ife, what are you passionate about? Um, I think I'm passionate about people being themselves and creating environments where people feel free to be themselves as well. I think um, they're both uh, just as important. Okay. All right. Thank you. And to do? I'm passionate about food. So I always say this food? <laughs> food, yeah. <laughs> so I always say that food is part of my ministry because um, it's the best way to get conversations flowing, to show your culture, um, to make people vulnerable. I mean, once you put really good food in front of people, their guard drops a little bit, and then it just makes the conversation a little bit easier. So, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> so do you cook yourself? Um, yeah, I do, but I, I try to keep that a secret so that people don't ask me to cook. So, yeah. <laughs> well, <now you're> just... <laughs> you revealed it now. I'll just about to ask yeah. you. Yeah. Now, you know. <laughs> okay, great. Um, okay, one more odd question for both of you. If you were, I'm sure you, you've heard this before, if you were on a desert island, What's the one thing you will take with you, if it, one thing? Um, to be completely honest, I'd probably just take my phone. I feel like <laughs> it has enough on there. I was thinking, should I say my Bible? But then I realized that could be on my phone as well. So I think, <laughs> I think a phone just makes the most sense. <laughs> okay, good. To do, will that be the same thing? No, I would leave my phone. I love human beings, but you know, let's 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 have a break a bit. <laughs> but um, unless if I can take my phone, but like switch off the network and just not be disturbed, then yes. Yeah. So similarly to if uh, because you can put everything on your phone now. So music, Bible app, notes, even movies. So yeah. But you know the challenge. I forgot to actually say this when if I said um. The challenge is on the desert island, like, you might not have um, internet access. But I guess you don't need that for your Bible. You can still read it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you download <laughs> enough movies, enough music. Yeah. Like the version of the Bible you want. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. I like the way you think. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, again, ladies, welcome to Hangout Cafe. Now, the conversation is. Um, about the challenges young ladies in particular feel uh, or face right uh, rather in today's world. And we're going to have a conversation next year about the challenges young men face because I was told that it's not just young ladies, young men too face um, challenges. So the two of you, can you share a bit about what you think the challenges are that um, your generation face? Because the truth is that when I think about your generation, I think I, we probably had, it, it, well, things were not as um, 
difficult as I think they are for you guys now. It, I think mm -hmm. it was much easier for us, much, much easier. So let's tell me what are the, what are the challenges you guys face? Anyone can start off. Um, I would say we have access to knowledge and so, um, which is good, but then it's now knowing how to develop that into wisdom. So we have, you know, the access to the information, which is amazing. I mean, you know, with the development of um, social media and even just the development of, of the internet. Yeah. And so, you know, you have amazing people that put out really cool resources in different industries. But the, well, one of the challenges for me personally is now, okay, I have this access to the information, yeah. but how do I make that transition into wisdom? Because we sometimes confuse the two together. Um, we think that was it, like, we think knowledge is wisdom, but really knowledge is just retaining and um, gathering information and then wisdom is the application. Mm -hmm. And so we become very knowledgeable, but then slightly unwise because we don't know how to apply the wisdom. Oh, and, wow. and so connecting it, so then it's now having like the humility to go back to my parents' generation and the aunties and the uncles and saying, okay, and have this awareness in this area, but yeah. what does that look like in practicality? So, yeah. I love that. I actually love that. <laughs> and we're going to come back to that. We're definitely going to come back to that. Let me note that now. Okay. If, uh, and guys, if you have questions, please don't forget to ask, um, put the questions. I don't, I can't, well, put them in the question box if you have, or in the comment box, because I know last week we had challenges with the question box. Um, so yeah, if uh, go on, please. I would say um, safety, and I think um, this is in different ways. So I guess in my context, it's just simple things like actually just getting home safely or, um, using the tube and I think before you kind of say you know make sure you're home by five six that kind of thing you know mm -hmm. do everything you can to protect yourself yeah. and I think in more recent times it's like even even that isn't enough and so I'd say like um yeah definitely post-pandemic as things opened up I feel like it was just a lot more evident that women aren't really safe on the streets and then if you take it to like a more global context you yeah. think about I guess the dangers that women face in in less like um developed or like less western areas and I just think globally there is an issue with with women's safety and I think it just becomes more apparent every day okay mm -hmm. so what are you now what do you what do you do what do you try to do to protect yourself and so you, what you think could be done yeah, I mean, I try, I guess, uh, meet friends when we're going places, I guess, meet as early in the, uh, in the journey as possible. I take um, Uber's home from the station, which I really don't like the fact that I have to do that because it's really like running up my, my Uber bill <laughs> is really high these days. And I think when you even hear that, you know, stuff happens in Ubers or Uber mm. drivers, um, mm. you know, trapping ladies and it's like I'm paying more money to be safe and actually putting myself also in a compromising situation so I think there's only really so much that women can do without a behavioral like a behavioral change from the other side yeah. um but yeah those are just things I do to I guess try and and improve my situation okay what else what do you think I mean Tudu you can answer this too what do you think um can be done or should be done um training on both genders i think there's been growing up because i have an older brother and so there was more of an emphasis on your woman you're supposed to come back at this time you're a woman you're supposed to do this and you know my my parents did train my brother to don't get me wrong but it was a lot more he could go out and be out later okay. than Is i he could older than you or younger he's older than me okay. so you know there was like more of an emphasis on oh, you're a woman, so you got to be home. And it's kind of like, and I used to fight my dad saying, you know, God forbid, oh, but violence can happen to both genders. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not one or the other. It can just happen to both genders. And so similarly to if I, what I've also done um, in addition to Ubers and stuff is also share my location, mm. my phone location with my cousin so she knows where I'm at at all times and vice versa. Yeah. Um, but Going back to the question you asked, it's also training. 
um, just making sure that guys also understand that it's it's responsible. It's a responsible adult's duty to come home at an appropriate time. It's not gender specific in any way, shape, or form, and it shouldn't be taught like that. So yeah, that's a good one. I saw on the news this week in um, uh, Congo, uh, mm. two ladies developed an app where, mm -hmm. you know, when you go, um, your Uber comes. So mm -hmm. the app actually, you take a, um, what's that called, thing called, QR code. Mm -hmm. And it has the picture of the driver and the number plate. And that sends it to, I don't know, somewhere before you actually get in. So if anything happens, because apparently then, they were uh, ladies were being kidnapped every day. At least five ladies were being kidnapped every day. But mm -hmm. now they said it's dropped over the last um, year. It's dropped to maybe just five women, at least those that are reported. So they're mm -hmm. hoping that the app will be uh, used in other countries where at least you can see the driver's seats. Because this particular lady that they interviewed, she said, um, fortunately, I don't think she was raped, but they took her uh, jury, they beat her up and then dropped her somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. But she said, if I, and she couldn't remember, you know, the way you enter a cab and you just sit at the back. So she couldn't remember the driver's face or anything. But with this app, before you actually go in, you see the face and it's sent to wherever the thing sends it to. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, safety, that's one mm -hmm. issue. Um, well, um, Tundu talked about knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of knowledge, <laughs> but we do have the wisdom. The wisdom. And I love that because sometimes I think there's this thing about your generation and our generation where um, I, and I, I, get, I put on my hand, I might be wrong, where uh, we think, oh, you guys don't want to have anything to do with us because you guys know it all. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying now is, yes, you have the knowledge, but you think that we should, you should go to the older ones, older ladies for the mm -hmm. wisdom to apply the knowledge. Mm -hmm. if it, would you agree with that? I would definitely agree. I think there is a lot of facts that, that are spread like on a daily. And I think the more that we know, the actual less we know. So I, yeah, I definitely agree with Tindu on that point. Okay. Okay. What are, what are the challenges? Some, um, somebody sent me a, um, um, some questions. And one of the things she said was that she felt that there's always a choice between um, career and family life. Do you think is that a challenge that you think women face or young ladies face? Or maybe you're not there yet. Um I I I'd say I'm not I'm not there yet to be completely <laughs> honest, but I think I have also seen like a change in in a lot of policies from companies. I think mm -hmm. um, there is a um, policy change and there is behavioural change and it's whether you have all many policies, but if people don't feel comfortable enough to actually use them and actually, you know, take maternity leave, even if you're saying they can have like 50 weeks, then it's kind of in vain. But I will mm -hmm. say that there is um, efforts being made, especially like women led companies like Bumble is a dating company, but their um, whole thing is kind of like women first. And I actually know someone maybe i shouldn't <laughs> say this but i'd say that um when policies are really made with like women in mind by women um mm -hmm. it seems to be a lot better so i'd say i'd say that's an area where i think it's changing but at the same time i'm not in a position where i need to take it so i don't want to you know comment too much on that okay. <laughs> um i agree with you fair. um and also just to add um, I think having a really good, for those that do want to get married, having a good partner helps. Um, someone that is on the same page as you. Because I, I, I've noticed, I mean, with my family growing up, a lot of them are career women. Okay. And what helps is, I mean, I might be wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing it as like a niece slash daughter perspective. And so... What I've seen is like, you know, that support whereby it's not a case of, okay, they have to surrender one or the other. You know, um, someone has said that in, in marriage, it's supposed to be 50-50, but not in the typical sense, which is like, there's a season whereby your, your spouse has to support you more or should support you more. Oh, yeah. And then there's another season whereby you now support your spouse. And so when you marry well, as they say, yeah. Um, that that helps a lot, and and it looks like putting your cards on the table and saying, okay, 
this is what I want to do in my career. This is, you know, um, like you start how you want to finish rather than pretending to be to be what you're not. So if you're not actually a, um, what's the word, a housewife, yeah. don't start off on that note. Just come in, <laughs> come in head first and say, I'm a career woman. I really want to, you know, put family first. But at the same time, I also want to ace it in my career. And, and you know, as if I said, there's a lot of companies. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of really cool, like I was envious because I found out a company pays for like um, menstrual leave. And so, you know, there's some companies that are like, steps ahead of the government so you have that outside support now coming in but then also making sure that in-house you have a good support system that believe in that believes in women you know achieving and not limiting or putting a glass in in-house because there's nothing worse than being successful in your workplace and then coming home and being capped mm. like it's very detrimental so yeah okay um as you were talking, something crossed my mind now. Mm. Oh, in fact, two things, I hope I remember. Um, have you had that conversation, or your parents, have they had that, co- have they had that conversation with you about mm. marriage and in terms of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of you want to achieve this, you want to buy a house, you want to buy this, you want to buy a house, but don't forget that you're a woman, you will, you're going to get married. So mm. don't overdo things. Have you? I no. think I don't yeah. know. Your daughter, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, to be to be completely honest, I haven't had that. Well, my mum never told me that. I don't think that. Um, I think she's always kind of taught me to not let anything. I guess mm-hmm. try and like squash my like my yeah my 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 light my shine or like what I what I want in life. And I think she's always encouraged me to go. For what I want and I think it's what Chinji is saying that because I've been brought up like that when I'm yeah. looking for a husband it's we'll have these conversations and if I feel like you know you expect me to kind of just pack everything away mm-hmm. as soon as we get married we probably won't, won't be compatible to be honest <laughs> <laughs> like that's just that's just the fact <laughs> what about you Susan? Same, same as if I, as in, um, and I was saying this to my friend that I'm fortunate I did not have parents or aunties that were emphatical on marriage being like the center of focus. Then, um, you know, my parents are more on build your empire, God will bring him to you, and two empires become one. Um, because when you look at it from, or rather, um, when you look at it from a perspective of Deborah in the Bible, for example, yeah. I mean, she was everything, a prophet, a warrior, all of these amazing things, but also a wife. And so I don't know where we thought um, submission sometimes may look like. Um, I don't, I feel like it might be a bit controversial what I'm about to say, but, you know, I don't know where our interpretation of submission now became a thing of, domination um but when you look at someone like deborah her husband allowed her and i say that loosely by the way but her husband you know respected the grace the anointing yeah. the the strength within her yeah. and let her be i mean to to always be found seated under if i i forgot the name of the tree but to always be found there prophesying that meant that you know it wasn't that burden on her to be a housewife it meant that he honored the the anointing upon her life and so you know having that maturity and that grace and just that wisdom has been amazing to see with my parents with my aunties and my uncles and then of course with my aunties it's like that concern that as a woman you don't ever want to be um what's the word you don't ever want to be cut off like you should always be independent but not from a place of oppressing your partner just have your own yeah. and share your own but have your own so yeah yeah <laughs> at the same time i i actually did have a question because i was speaking about this with some friends and we were saying that mm. that we don't have children at the moment we just have jobs and then i guess some of us will have side hustles and how mm. we're like <laughs> how did our parents actually find the time to to as women go to work and then 
go and do the school run and then make sure that everyone has time, like yeah. everyone has food to eat. Because yeah. as to be completely honest, my, my parents were in Nigeria for the past month and um, it was just me and my sister at home. And we had takeaway every night. Like we, we couldn't oh, wow. find the time to cook. And this is just us as, as single women with pretty much no responsibilities living at home. And I, I guess it's a genuine question to you, Auntie Zunke, or, or anyone on here. Like, how do you actually find the time to have all the things going for you and then still take care of children and, and your husband to some extent as well? Like, <laughs> because I can't see it right now. I mean, I, just, I, I won't speak for everyone because everybody's different and I'm also not your typical, um, well, I don't know what to call it. But I think I think you just do it. I didn't, It's not something that I even used to think about. You know, I got mm. married, had children. Um, and I'm not, there was a period when I had help. It was when the children were older, when I had, um, what do they call them, au pairs. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that wasn't for a long period of time. But I, if you ask most women now, um, at least my generation, they'll just tell you that they just got on with it. It wasn't something that um, they really thought about. And anyone on the um, platform, please um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think most of us, just we just got on with it. We didn't even have to think, oh, um, who's going to do the cooking? Who's going to um, look after the children? We just did it. I mean, like for me, for example, because... Um, when the children were younger, my husband was still working um, as a consultant doctor. So most, a lot of times he was away from, he was at work and then of course church work also. But I just did it. I mean, that's why, honestly, and I'm not condemning you guys or anything, um, but I sometimes think that you guys don't have the, um, it's a capacity yes i think that's the word i'll use capacity to deal with a lot of things that are going on now because i hear oh it's the same thing with my children oh i'm tired i've been at work all day you know i come back and mo mommy was was this there's nothing to eat i'm not cooking for you <laughs> <laughs> i looked at you when you i'm not going to start you know and yes somebody said resilience yes but you just have to, you have to prayerfully develop that capacity, that resilience, and then also pray for grace. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Ask God for the grace um, to be able to just do things like that. Uh, because the truth is that you'll take the children to school, drop them off. I mean, these are some of the things. So you wake up in the morning, get the children ready, drop them off at school, rush off after work, pick them up. I mean, of course, if you have a supportive partner, mm -hmm. and I pray that you do, it helps. And I'm not saying that my husband didn't help. I mean, he helped when he was around. But it's always very good to have someone who is supportive, helping mm -hmm. you. And again, don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, mm -hmm. if you're struggling in any area, ask for help. Ask your uh, parents. You know, I've said, mm -hmm. I'm not looking after anybody's child. Ask your parents. <laughs> ask your aunties. <laughs> ask your friends for help. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what we just got on with it. That's the truth. And I, I, I think most people have just said, um, develop grades. Dr. Zion said, yes, you just do it. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, with a supportive partner, it helps having a supportive partner. Yeah. Anything else, folks? Anything else you can say to them that would help <laughs> them <laughs> as they grow older? Yes, I agree. Both men, men and women should own equal responsibility for those things. But I guess sometimes we women, we think that this is our own risk. We are the ones that should wake up the children. We're mm -hmm. the ones that should cook. Um, We're the ones that should take them to school. No, anybody can, both of you can agree to do it. So somebody wakes up the children or both of you wake up the children and give them back. So drop them off at school. But mm -hmm. yeah, we need raising up children. Um, you need a whole community around you. And that's the truth. You really need, and what I'll say is don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to say, I need help. I can't do this on my own. Please, will somebody help me? And mm -hmm. yeah, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Okay, I hope that has helped a bit, if I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> um, and, but you know, um, I remember speaking once to Dr. Nuz, and I think when he came on, he actually said the same thing. If you can't cook, well, especially when you're married, you have a family, get someone who can cook. Mm 
and just put it in plastics and I'll put it in the freezer. That's hoping that your husband is not somebody that they have heard of some husbands that want to eat fresh stew every day <laughs> in this 21st century. I don't know. <laughs> if you can't cook, if you're not someone who enjoys cooking, get someone who can cook. I mean, just, it's not a big deal. That's the truth. It's not. And sometimes it's the husband that can cook. My husband cooks very well. His mother was um, a caterer, so he can cook very well. Um, now I've stopped, to be honest, I've stopped cooking. The children, they're the ones that cook. I don't. I can't even. I can't be bothered. <laughs> so, okay, let's go to the conversation. <laughs> yes. So, let's talk about relationships in terms mm. of boy girl relationship. Do you guys mm. have challenges in that? The young ladies have challenges in that area. Today. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me say it with my chest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, and the quality has dropped. You oh, know, really? the standard yeah. has dropped. The yeah. quality has I, dropped. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to write that down <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I would be surprised if the men, when they come, the young men, when they come next year, they say the same thing. And maybe the quality they can't. Is <laughs> <laughs> it says they right actually can't. Time. It says like, no, I'm sure <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> okay so why do you think the quality has dropped but what are the things that you've seen that make you say such uh, make a statement okay so i'm old school my my thing is respect um whatever you do just do it with respect um whatever role you you decide to um take on you know just it's all about respect for me like mutual respect above all and so with that now because there's like this power struggle you know um so some yeah there's a power struggle there's this need to prove that i have more power in the relationship than you when really there should be a healthy balance there should be Sorry, because i haven't dated in a long time, long time. <laughs> how does that play explain yeah. what, explain what you mean this um, is so let's say for example going out on a date yeah. um so as I said, I'm I'm old school. You invite me out for a date, yeah. you're paying, but I'll bring Vex money. So that for anyone that doesn't know what Vex money is, it's basically when you have the money in your account and yeah. you know, you go on a date, you make sure you, everything is covered financially in your bank account. So that if the guy tries anything funny, you've got your taxi sorted, you can pay for your part of the meal and so forth. Yeah. But generally speaking, um, Vex money is just supposed to sit in your account in case of in case it is. Now, if you ask me on the date, you're paying. But then the downside, and I don't know what the cause of the change has been, right. but it, nowadays, if a guy pays for the date, yeah. there's this entitlement. Mm -hmm. There's this, oh, well, I paid, so I'm entitled to your time. I'm entitled to your body. And it's like, no. I wasn't brought up like that. I mean, I have amazing male friends that even if, even if I go out shopping with them, yeah, they would want to cover it. And it's like food shopping, for example. So if I say I wanted to get like something light to eat, mm -hmm. they would pay for it. So if my standard in in male friends is at this level, there's no way I'm going to drop it for anyone that I'm going that I'm dating. Yeah. Now the power struggle now comes in in that. Because the man wants to exert his authority and, 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 and pay so that he has full total ownership in his mind okay. over the rest of that evening. The woman noticing that will now say, no, let's split the bill in half, which is wisdom. Mm -hmm. But it just, and it's a repeated thing. I mean, even on Twitter, you see very, I mean, I don't know what part of the TL, if I, you because like, you know the TL's big so yeah. <laughs> don't know which part you face but with my side of the with my part of the TL I see a lot of conversations as to if I'm paying if I'm spending a hundred pounds on a meal for two I'm entitled and it's like no what <laughs> no <laughs> you're not entitled to the air you breathe what makes you think you're entitled to somebody's body kind of thing and so the, the standard has dropped entirely um I don't know why that is maybe it's an absence of healthy men i mean when and and there's a way that men can um 
can command respect that makes you gravitate in a yeah. role. Yeah. Who yeah. are you? Yeah. But now you have men, young boy, young boys transitioning to men that just come and say, respect me. It's like, hello, hi. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, <yeah>. Wow. <laughs> that is that is sad though. But I guess yeah, it is. <laughs> I guess if they don't have role, um, role models, positive mm-hmm. role models, then yeah. I guess they just copy whoever they see around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay, is there? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the dating piece is, is a big one. I think, but mine is just, um, it's kind of separate to that. It's actually just, I think what Tim has said, the respect. Mm-hmm. I think that, and of course, I would never want to generalize, but from what I've seen recently, it's like people don't know how to talk to women, like literally on just a basic, respectable like standpoint. And I think I've noticed, because I think when I was younger, I would kind of just let things play out just for the sake of it. So... Right. Um, you know, you're seeing red flags, but you're just kind of ignoring them. You're saying, this isn't serious. So like, it doesn't really matter if I talk to you for a year or whatever. But now that I've like been cutting things short, as soon as I see like a red flag, I found that that it's not even lasting like three days. Like I can't even speak to someone for three days without them just saying something so outrageous. And I can't even mm-hmm. repeat some of the things that that I've heard recently. And it's like how... How did we get from, hey, how are you, to this? Like, yeah. how do you actually think it's okay to, to speak to a woman like this? And I think mm-hmm. the fact that people don't know how to let you know that they're interested without saying just really crude and, like, sexual statements. And, and the fact that it's not even an anomaly, I think that's yeah. what mm-hmm. makes it so worse. Like, Hinge is, like, a dating app that um, I, I'm not sure. Well, you said you haven't dated in a while, of course. So, but um, it's, like, um, it's one that people use. And so you put about six pictures on of yourself on it and then also six prompts. And so it's basically mm-hmm. to encourage more, like, conversations to mm-hmm. foster, whereas um, apps such as Tinder that focus just on your face, um, that people were seeing issues with Tinder because it was just physical. But you find that with Hinge, as much as they made the effort to have the prompt as well, you still find like the same disgusting comments on, on there. And um, I actually did a post where like, I, I screenshotted a lot of um, like the comments I was receiving on it. I've deleted the app for my health and just <laughs> genuine um, sanity. But it's just, it's, it's very crazy. That's all I would say. I honestly say it's like the wild, wild west now. If you found someone, just hold on to them. Like, if, if they just, just hold on to them, honestly, because there is, there's nothing out there. Okay, I shouldn't say nothing, <laughs> but it's like, it's hidden. It's hidden. That's what I'd say. Mm-hmm. So, what do you, okay, I know, um, I'm just trying to figure out. So, what's the solution? What do we do? What can we do? Faster than praying and deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, you're laughing, but you're, she, she's actually I'm not. Serious. She's not wrong because it's even like meet people, they say like, "Oh yeah, they're Christian, they're in church, they serve, they're they're a, they're a drummer," and <laughs> it's like you're not seeing any difference. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. even say it's so, oh. I mean, I wouldn't say the immediate solution is just oh, bring more men into church because I think I think there's probably a, like a serious like spirit out there. Um, that does require <laughs> deliverance. Yeah. So, someone just put that on. So we change the general culture. And I guess, again, it's going yeah. back to upbringing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, the background of the person, how um, they were brought up. But I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they would probably have a few um, young men there who are Descent, who are respectful, I guess. In fact, someone said church yeah. voices have had plenty. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I agree. <laughs> the worst ones are in church. I, really? I, I, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, musicians yeah, in the church. Yeah. Wow. Well, don't want to That's another topic. Mm. I don't want to change Wow. Wow. That is sad. <laughs> wow. But I guess, you know, we always expect. And I, I, this, I mean, I'm sure you know this. We always think that everyone in church is saved. 
Yeah. But that's not true. It's a and hospital. everyone in church hasn't been converted. I have <laughs> had a conviction. Mm-hmm. So they might... <laughs> oh gosh, this is so funny. This Thomas have his spirit. This is what I said. I said the drummers. I said the drummers. <laughs> If you don't find, if you don't fear anyone, it's the drummers you should fear. Drummers and keyboardists, drummers and keyboardists, and then the occasional ones that can sing, like the worship leaders, the ones that should be spirit led. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness! Anyone that's in the choir, please defend yourself. <laughs> Miss Omosi is just listing every single time. Yeah. <laughs> she said bassist. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> but it's true. By the fruits you shall know them. And it's very true because you said upbringing. And um, I, know, I know of a lot of people that have been brought up well, so to speak, yeah. but they've deviated from that. And so their actual fruits is not and it's a bit it's it's quite interesting because you can't grow an apple out of an orange um tree but somehow i don't know where the corruption came in but somehow they have done the impossible and they're now apples (laughs) they're now producing apples and when you see their parents and you see you know the effort so it's like is it a temporary thing is it permanent like is it a transitional thing and i saw someone um, speak on culture and it's true i mean the the quality of music i was born in the 90s um early 90s and so the the standard of music i mean they're still vulgar don't get me wrong but in terms of what it is now yeah yeah no so even right down to the music even right down to i mean the 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 fashion if i might be a bit risque you know on both ends both male and female it's like now it's normal to sell your body and it's normal for a guy to just approach you like that and it's 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 quite uncouth on both ends because now it's like what happened to taste? When did the taste reduce? Mm. When did the taste drop? And how do we go back to, to? Because there's nothing, there's nothing. You could be sexy and, you know, still be decent, still be respectful, still be all these, you know, upright, still be classy with it, you know. Yeah. But now it's like even some guys just feel like, oh, okay, I could speak to her this type of way and that's a smooth line and you hear all my little things you hear body parts described in ways that should not be described and you're just like how is this attractive but it's normal it's become a trend and if you respond any type like if you respond defending yourself you get attacked um i i heard or not even heard i saw this on twitter whereby this girl was walking i forgot who she was with but this guy tried to hit on her and refer to like her body parts basically as part of the pickup line and when she stood up for herself he spat at her and i was like wow, wow. wow. so where where did we or where did culture or society get it that it's normal you know authority as a man now looks like oh yeah if she says no yeah you're entitled to disrespect her. it's like yeah no <laughs> so yeah. yeah i think I think the upbringing point is interesting because I think you'll find that even the kind of men that we're talking about who have been disrespectful, they won't yeah. be to their mum or their sister. So they're, mm-hmm. they're able to actually make that separation and how, really? I don't know. Okay. But I think that what people actually probably do respect more than their, what their parents say is actually what their friends say. And I think mm-hmm. that you do have decent guys out there, yeah. but mm-hmm. often these guys they're not checking their friends or they're not checking their friends often enough because the way that that guy groups work and this is just me obviously looking from outside in they have a lot of a lot of respect for each other if if everyone said okay we're not going to talk to this guy until he changes his ways that that will i feel have a lot more have a lot more effect than oh your mum just telling you off and i've seen (laughs) like i've met crazy people through decent people or i've like i've met i've met friends of friends and you're like how how are you friends because you are very normal yeah. and he's not and i think 
I think that um, you know they'll kind of they'll kind of laugh about it or they'll say, oh, that's just how he is. Like, don't mind him. And I think that's what it is. It's just allowing mm-hmm. people to to stay in their way. So I think that, and I'd, I'd be quite interested to hear the conversation that you have with guys. But I think that that men do have a responsibility to um, to check their friends. And then mm-hmm. the point about mm-hmm. culture, I think. I find it quite I find it quite difficult because mm-hmm. yeah maybe you know you shouldn't be walking around at at, at 11 a.m like exposing mm-hmm. yourself like but I think that that doesn't really solve it like a lot of the things mm-hmm. they do start with like the heart of men and how they yeah. see women yeah. because yeah. I've had friends go home in like hoodies track suits like wearing overcoats and yeah. nonsense still happens and yeah. I think mm-hmm. as soon as we you know try and create this list of of things that that women have to do yeah it may it may help in the short run but in the long run you still have that man. behavior and it's that mm-hmm. behavior that's just constantly allowed and mm-hmm. i think i think that is the root of the problem really mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, I agree with you because i sometimes we hear people say oh if she didn't wear a short skirt then the guy wouldn't have done this but really whether she was wearing a short skirt or not he shouldn't have done anything in the world mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not your age now. And because <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know how, how, how Wow. Yeah, that's, really... I saw um, one of the earlier comments said that um, our age, that people our age lack resilience. And it's like, yeah, maybe we don't know how we're going to cook for our children. <laughs> deal with, with so much and it's we true. have to deal with it like out in the open with social yeah. media and so yeah. i just say it's like it's a different form of resilience and we probably do need to learn learn from each other like the different mm-hmm. kinds mm-hmm. okay maybe mm-hmm. it's something we should look at um talking more about building resilience and developing mm-hmm. resilience and also tolerance yeah mm-hmm. i think it's something we really need to um, talk about um, especially for your generation um, but I guess also part of it is, uh, I don't know if Dr. Zion will probably know how to, to put this properly, developing mental, um, I don't know, that there's a word I'm looking for, but I, Dr. Zoe, I know you're on, if you can help me, please. Um, something to do with developing your mental something, something. I'm sure she'll, she'll help me with that. But, um, so, <laughs> we're still talking about relationships. <laughs> so, how do you, how do you, if a guy comes to you now and says, um, I don't even know the language, I don't even know what <laughs> you guys say now it is. How, okay, let me just ask a simple question. How do you guys approach you? Oh, gosh, and I was going to ask about the dating app thing, but let me ask this question first. How do you guys nowadays talk to ladies in terms of, uh, maybe let's say it's even a decent person because the ones that are not decent, like you said, they were saying something about your body parts. Mm-hmm. What, what do they say? How do they approach ladies nowadays? But do you, do you guys are you guys friends first, and then you do you start uh, going out to eat? Do they invite you out, or what? How do how do how does it work nowadays? Please, I want to know. So I, I'd say like the I guess the most like normal situation would be yeah, yeah it does vary. But um, you like you might meet at say a party, you're talking, mm-hmm. you get along, and then like they ask for your number. And they'll talk and they'll be like, oh, maybe we should go for lunch or we should go for dinner, that kind of thing. Okay. I'd say I'd say that that's like the most standard way. What would you say to me? Um, ambush under the disguise of friendship. <clears throat> you know, that's like, <laughs> you know, it'll just say, like, it's quite smooth. And as Miss Omati said, ask for your favourite colour, you know, small talk. And then they say, let's go get something light. And, you know, before you know it, you just entered, I guess, a talking stage. Yeah. And then it, depending on how the wind blows and what red flags or amber flags that you see before they turn into red flags, it either gets into a relationship or you just shut it down. But it's not, I mean, for me, sometimes it's not as clear cut as it should be. You know, it's, now it's a case of, oh yeah, we're just kicking it as friends. Let's see where it goes. It's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What do you mean? Let's see where it goes. Or how the river flows or how or however they put it. And in the past, I mean, um, watching 
people of my that are now my well that now I'm at their age, but when I was younger, yeah. um, I would watch their dating or they would, you know, compare to me as to how it goes. And they, it was very, it was very um, straightforward. It was very like, I like you. Let me not lie to you. I just want to get to know you to date you. But nowadays it, it comes under the guise of friendship. Like, oh yeah, let's just be friends. But then the actions that they do, it's not, clearly defined so you're like are we friends are we not what are we so yeah <laughs> well i hear they also ask for your insta <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i would say though that people do like start as they mean to go on so if they are doing that kind of like friendship route yeah nine mm-hmm. times out of ten they they don't want anything serious mm-hmm. um, yeah that's actually true yeah, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I say. To be and I guess if they start out by saying, I want to be your friend, and mm. nothing happens after, they they can come back and say, but I, all I said was I wanted to be your I friend. I want to be your friend. But then I think now it's a case of they say it, but then the actions don't match, match. the words. And that's where the confusion comes in. And so you have a lot of, I mean, I'm guilty of being in that stage where in the past, where it's like, okay, you say we're friends, but then do you do this with all your female friends mm-hmm. kind of thing good question, good question. <laughs> so it's just now like being like for me now it's a case of boundaries that are cool if we're friends we're friends if we're kicking it it's more than friends say we're more than friends state your intentions don't be afraid kind of thing so yeah and when you're friends um so i just want to be a friend do mm-hmm. they sometimes still date other women does my generation do do we know what dating is? <laughs> okay. No. Why is dating? <laughs> no, um when I say that I mean like because the talking stage, the way that they've made the talking stage so what's the word? Um general and so like fast. Yeah. You don't know if you're actually in an in a relationship or still in a talking stage because what should have been reserved for like dating like the exclusivity and the um the intimacy you now find that that level of intimacy a lot of the times it's done in the talking stage so and and i was saying this to a friend of mine um whereby i was like you know what i'm gonna start dating like a man Men, they keep their options open. We women, once we find someone and we're set, we close all of other options, Option. even in the talking stage. Yeah. Whereas men, they're still speaking. They're still exploring. And so I was like, you know what? That's wisdom. Until you tell me that we are together in a relationship, I'm single. Whereas, um, and so going back, like, in, in a, even in friendships that have been, or friendships that the guy wants the benefit of a talking stage of a relation or a relationship, <sighs> the actions still don't match. You know, they still they they hide their responsibilities. There we go. The the responsibility, the accountability that they're supposed to take on, they hide it behind. But I said we were friends. Mm-hmm. And then they now feel entitled to your exclusivity. So they get upset if they find out you're talking to someone else. Right. They find out if you've moved on. But then when you find out about what they're doing, they'll just, just go back to that line of, but I said, we're friends. I said, we'll see how it goes. And so the the girl now feels confused and it's like, oh, wait, okay, who's wrong? And it's a form of gaslighting, in my opinion, because if you say we're friends, then... I should be free to go on dates with other people. I should be free to explore. I should essentially not, you shouldn't feel entitled to my exclusive um, exclusivity. Whereas that doesn't always happen. So, yeah. You know, as you were talking, something crossed my mind. You know, that even that, oh, I just want to be your friend and then let's see how it goes. It doesn't sit well with me. Mm. You know, I just feel, I'm not, um, you're not in the market pricing things and saying, do I want to buy this one or I want to buy that one? So, I, I mean, maybe your generation, maybe you guys are different. But for me, it doesn't sit well with me. Who do you think you are? You know, if you, want to date, if you want to date me. You tell me you want to date me, not telling me. I just want to see how it goes. Yes, I, yeah. Excuse me, I'm, I'm worth 
more than you think I was. So I'm not mm-hmm. going to sit around and wait for you to make up your mind. Or as, you know, they say men are hunters anyway. Mm-hmm. So they're hunting around to see. <laughs> so it's, it's a market too. So. <laughs> 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 no, I, no, 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 no. I think at the end of the day, ladies, I think that you guys, um, what's the word now? You guys decide what you want. Mm-hmm. So you have the last word with regards to how any guy is going to treat you. Mm-hmm. And you know, as they say, you start off as you want to. Mm-hmm. If you want yeah. them to treat you like uh, um, rare china, mm-hmm. then from the on go, you tell them this friendship. You have to, we have to define it properly. I'm not mm-hmm. try. I'm not doing try and error. Mm-hmm. Now, I know it might be a bit difficult. Someone like if fair, if fair, sorry. How old are you? I'm 23. 23. Is yeah. I, I guess it might be a bit difficult for you to say to, to a guy, be honest I, like i i agree like with everything you've said like i don't believe in talking stages anymore and like i'm i'm too young to have seen what i've seen that's how i see it wow. um so i i'm very <laughs> just like at, that's what i said like before i'd be talking to people for like a year and now it's actually ended up just being three days and yeah, yeah there's like less people around but i'm i'm less stressed mm-hmm. and i don't deal with like things that I used to and I and I that's what that's what I said before in the sense of if someone has said the whole friendship and then see to me that's like a clear sign that you're not serious and and we can be friends but that's that is all we will be like there won't be any like confusion or anything because if you told me you want to be friends then that that's what we're going to be yeah. And I generally, like, I used to say to my friends that you'll have guys that are talking to you for, like, a year and they'll say, I don't want anything serious. I'm not looking for this. Da, da, da. And then two weeks after they stop speaking to you, they're in a full-blown full, relationship. Yep, I've seen this yep. happen so many times. I think guys know what they want pretty yep. early on from when they start dealing with you. Yep. And I think it is just like we just have to we do have to be 10 steps ahead like yes. we have to just yeah. Yeah. not not ignore what you said the red flags the amber flags because when you're out of it and you're looking back you're like to be honest like in the first month it was very clear yeah. but i've waited yeah. for 12 months now and i'm mm-hmm. stressed and i'm crying and all of this stuff because mm-hmm. i just didn't want to be lonely and it's not easy like it's, mm-hmm. it's not easy at all but I think it is the wiser thing wiser to do. Thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And ladies, please, if any guy has, um, invites you out, if he invites you out, let him pay. Yes. Let him pay. <laughs> Seriously. I know um, nowadays <laughs> you guys are into let's place the bill or whatever, but please, you're the one that invited me out. Mm-hmm. Then a respectful guy will pay. So, and that's uh, that's me being old school. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. My goodness. Um. I mean, there's a lot we can talk about with regards to relationship. I'm sure mm-hmm. we know we can go on and on and on about it. But um, I think what will be good will be we'll have the guys come to talk about uh, <laughs> this issue because I'm sure they might have one or two things to say, and then maybe bring you guys back um, with the guys. So yeah, yeah, and have a, a, a good conversation about it. Right, let's talk about mental health issues. Um, mm-hmm. your generation, what would you say about that? Mental health issues. Is it something that is a problem nowadays? A lot of young people depressed. A uh, lot of young people going through stuff. And if if that's true, how do you deal with it? I would say a lot of. Young people are going through stuff. I mean, we are the first collective generation to experience lockdown. Um, I that... know there's lockdown. Okay, I'm going to lockdown. Okay, I don't know what you mean. But yeah, um, and doing um, working from home, virtually studying. Um, trying to have some form of active social life in a limited capacity. But one thing I do love is our willingness to now be vocal about it, Um, using our 
social media platforms actually say, you know what, guys, I'm not in the best headspace. Or now you have a lot of young therapists um, that now put out their resources, resources that in the past, and when I say the past, is in like when I was 16, 17, you'd have to pay for, you'd have to, don't get me wrong, they still, you still pay for some of their services, but they put out certain resources you now have um so like the discussion around mental health is not as coded yeah. as it was um or as i remember it growing up and so even though there's a lot more that we're multitasking like never before um work-life balance looks completely different especially the introduction of working from home and if for me working from home um it's beautiful but then having to reestablish your boundaries because people believe that just because you're at home, you might not have a lot of things to do. And that's not true. In fact, it doubles because now um, your your responsibilities look different because your environment has changed. So you have, um, you know, you have a lot more, you have a lot more people going through things, but it's not coded. So there's a lot more support, be it communities that you can just, I mean, I saw this really cool association where you have black therapists for those that just want black therapists you have um you have different essentially different organizations different resources different sources. so yeah i mean i do i admire your generation um Mm -hmm. that's true because you guys are more open about a lot of stuff that we don't talk about especially this mental health issues so i really Mm -hmm. do admire your generation with regards to that Mm -hmm. if i um i would agree i think it's it's still it's still quite hard like um i guess it's quite a huge spectrum and something i think that i struggle with is being like okay like say it's here i'm like still in the early part so like let me you know still try and and deal deal with it on my own like i'll talk to friends about it but i think i'll often end up like self-medicating or kind of like um self-evaluating my way out of an issue and um i think that's just something that that i i deal with and then um, i find that like a lot of my friends will be like you know um it's now like talking to my therapist about it isn't such a like a crazy phrase but even with therapy as well like the the price is is still a thing and Mm. i've i've often joked that it's like choosing between being like broke or being crazy <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and it's like I've, I've been choosing crazy because like, I just don't like spending money and I'm like okay it's fine I'll just cry like for a week but I'll be fine out after it and I think um, I'm so glad that we we talk about it more and that I can say things like that yeah. but I think it's definitely still like we haven't like we haven't solved it I don't think it's solvable but I think yeah mm-hmm. it's it's that's that's where that's where I am. <laughs> I like that talking to Poppy Chris. <laughs> yeah, I know the cost of uh, seeing therapists is, is a bit high. Um, um, so the therapist in the room, please, please, no, <laughs> please. <laughs> so that more people can come. Maybe more people should get into um, should train to become therapists because I don't know if we have enough. Um, therapist actually because and especially black therapist mm-hmm. and also christian therapist yeah. we need definitely more more yeah. of those but i guess the, in the interim if you can't see a therapist just having people that you can talk to who will judge mm-hmm. you i think mm-hmm. that would help right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. um a good community a really good community um and and it's a bit rich coming from me because I don't I don't really open up as much because um, I'm also mindful that whom like the friends that I'm pouring out into they also have their own so I don't ever want to exceed my own um, grace as a friend so to speak but I will definitely say good community helps a lot I mean good um, sound council comes or well, actually not even sound council council just comes from community but the quality of the council that comes is dependent on the quality of the people that you you call friends and have your ears absolutely okay yeah someone just put you can talk to your gp free of charge i thought gp don't you talk to you for 10 minutes nowadays i don't know i think i might be wrong they do and then it's also the waiting list is long Long. 
Yeah, yeah, the wait list is long. I mean, I have a few friends that have gone through the GP route and they've said like two years for some. Um, even the ones that they can, yeah, even the ones that they consider um, emergency and what they consider emergency is if you if the person's suicidal. But also, I think also depending on the area that you're in. So if you're in Northwest London, but like in a really um, busy part of Northwest London, for example, yeah. the waiting list will be longer. But if you are outside of London, of course, the waiting list would be shorter as well. So yeah. Okay. Um, another thing that my friend actually did is she went through work and I think um, I'm guilty of it I don't really look at the benefits as much as I should um, but I would mm -hmm. check if your work can offer something like that as well okay okay mm -hmm. so some workplaces offer things like that yeah okay. mm -hmm. all right um, so GPs if there's a need we deal with it right okay mm -hmm. oh, okay so please if anyone if you need to talk to someone see you can reach out to your GPs. Some churches offer free counseling, free, um, you can see a therapist. I know in Jesus House we have that um, facility available and I'm sure there are other churches too where they have um, therapists and counselors that you can see. Or, or if you have a mentor, again, mm -hmm. you can speak to, um, but please, whatever you do, make sure you speak to someone. It's so important mm -hmm. to have someone that you can reach out to and um, just to know that you are not alone um, mm -hmm. with regards to whatever you're going through. Um, <laughs> don't just, don't just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the final thing um, before, and there's so many things um, we haven't even talked about. I don't know. Have we talked about negative stereotyping? Um, no, we haven't. Um, no. We've got that to talk about, and then there's a, also the lack of female role models. So which one should we talk about first? So negative okay. stereotyping imposed on women or anyone? I'm 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 open to whatever you guys want to talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um Maybe maybe the negative stereotyping. Okay. But um, I I feel like I would need like some examples of negative negative stereotypes. Like of of course they're out there, but um, just a bit of context. Oh, are you asking me? Yes. Please. Oh, well, <laughs> sorry. Yes. So, do you want to help with that? Um. The only one that came to mind is. I mean, the usual one of dressing, but then also if you're a strong personality, if you have a strong personality as a woman, uh -huh. um, are you seen as domineering okay. or are you seen as assertive? I mean, that's a common, I mean, I, I, for me growing up, that was a common thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's, that's the only one that came to mind right now. But yeah. yeah. It was actually a question somebody sent to me, so I'm not really sure yeah, okay. about the context in which um, she was referring to. Mm -hmm. um, okay, whilst we're thinking about that, let's talk about, do we have enough um, positive role models for women out there? What do you think? No. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to come up. Yeah, I would, I would disagree, <laughs> but... Um... Go <laughs> I would say no. Um, we have role models. I mean, anyone can be a role model, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but I think, how do I put this in the a, in a best way? I think context helps as well, actually. So, like, for example, with law, there are some more, like, women coming out. Um, in law so I can't completely say no in that regards but in terms of um, <laughs> well actually maybe I might take back my answer now thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> take back my answer. <laughs> let me take back my answer and so say maybe maybe I think we have a um, we have greater numbers emerging that are developing as role models and or and or fortifying their 
their ranks as role models, so to speak. But I think it depends on what industry and what aspect you look at it. Um, I mean, in terms of entertainment, you can't really... It's a bit tricky in terms of entertainment, in terms of music, in terms of... Okay. In terms of things like that. But Let yeah. me ask this question. Do a lot of, especially those who are on social media, do a lot of young ladies look at the celebs on Instagram and Twitter and all of that as their role models, do you think? <sighs> Instead of looking at... I think not from my experience to be oh. completely honest but i wanted to ask Cinderella, what kind mm -hmm. of school did you go to did you go to a like a mixed school or a girls school mixed yeah mixed. so like <laughs> i went to i went to a girls school from the age mm -hmm. of 13 mm -hmm. and a lot of like from like the found, founder ethos like it was one of the first um, girls schools in, in the uk and i think it was kind of rooted in us from the start like they would always like on the walls you'd have like a variety of women whether in entertainment whether in um like law whether in politics and i think from the start it was always mm -hmm. like just shown to us like women who were doing bits in their respective fields and like a variety of women as well and i mm -hmm. think that's why growing growing up or as i as i go for jobs I know mm -hmm. there is like um, the external thing, such as like the gender pay gap, but I know that majority of the world do view women as inferior. But I guess because I, from the bottom of my heart, don't believe that, I haven't mm -hmm. kind of let that stop me. And I think that does um, govern the women that I, I look for in terms of role models, but also in terms of my friends. And I wouldn't say anyone around me is like, looking to to a celebrity as like a role model or like they're like this so i'm going to be like that and that doesn't mean that like cardi b is a bit of a controversial a controversial mm -hmm. character mm -hmm. i wouldn't look to her as a role model in some things but i think in other things i would in terms of like in terms of her hustle and i think it's like if someone looks one way we kind of sometimes can disqualify them in mm -hmm. other ways but i mm -hmm. think that you can take the good in what um, someone's yeah. doing yeah. and like like just because she doesn't dress how I want to or talk how I want to doesn't mean that she doesn't have qualities that I can like can look to her in and yeah. I think that um I think that's quite important in in how we look at women around us as well that's true okay yeah um I would in terms of celebrities because I see this conversation a lot on Twitter um I'm of the mindset of the humans um take similarly to what if i say take what if i said take the good leave the bad don't throw out the baby with the bath water kind of situation um but ultimately genuinely speaking as someone said it's not their responsibility either but looking at it from from the environments that i've been in terms of um church aunties and church culture because i grew up in church um hit and miss for me so going to a mixed school we didn't have the luxury of having those um having role models female role models you just had i mean sociology you know you hear about like the suffragettes movements and so forth yeah. um and in terms of like learning black history um the feminist part of the black panther movement for example but did not have that benefit however because of the way my personality has been um, very like assertive and authoritative as a child. My mom made me learn about the Condoleezza Rice and made me learn about like the Michelle Obamas and so forth. So in that regards, and, and weirdly enough, I can count on my hands, on one hand, the amount of strong aunties that my spirit just gravitated to that took, that did not take nonsense, you know, can name them, um, and even whenever it's like their birthdays, I always just remind them that you guys were like examples and they're still examples for me. But, and that's, that was when I was younger. So to a certain degree, even in the church world, the, the, the quality of role models or the people that are indirectly rising up as role models, yeah. um, because you can't control how people see you. 
I mean, you just live your life. You can't actually control how people see you. No. So if someone comes up to you and says, oh, I've been looking up to you um, as a role model, it is pressure and sometimes it's unfair, but it's, it's one of those, oh, okay. But so the quality, the standard of immersion um, role models are definitely changing. But I think ultimately as people, we need to be quite careful in in um in, re- in recognizing that these people are human beings they are born to ever we all have flaws yeah yeah so yeah okay there's something um she said Oluteras, that i think they are role models but they have not been utilized as sometimes people are looking for something grand or looking for someone very important as a role model and mm-hmm. sometimes the older ones that have the quality to be role models tend to be judgy and say stuff like, "This, all these young ones are not serious." Yeah, <laughs> the dismissiveness is a common thing. Is that something that you find in um, churches? Yeah, but if I could raise my legs too, I would. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, or you even, or you even hear very like snide comments okay. from older aunties, um, as. Especially when they see you, um, when they see you, quote unquote, achieving more than they chose to achieve, and then they try to undermine it and say, "Well, it's good that you can do this success because you are young, you know." But when you are married, and it's like, like there's a lot of projection. Basically, when they sense that you are a threat in one way or another, again, fortunately for me. I don't really encounter it as much, but I've heard from friends in church and and just generally people. And I get, and it's not to generalize and say it's all over. It's just the side of church that I face, if that makes sense. I mean, some people have had positive encounters yeah. um, with women in church, but for the sides of the church that I face, yeah. there's a lot of projection. And indirectly, even my own age mates technically do it to those that are younger so i'm 28 um and so those that are 28 they now do it to the 20 year olds and the 18 year olds and then there's like a it's like inherited toxicity basically mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. okay if there anything else anything to contribute no i i think <laughs> i'm i think i'm quite like lucky in the sense of like you and I honestly not just because you're on here and like the other people that I guess have been in, in my life from young since I was like people that my mum are friends with and then even like um, the women in my family like my aunties and my grandma um, and I do understand that I guess not everyone is is that fortunate mm-hmm. um, but I do think that your environment is really important to to how you view the world yeah. and so if people do play that role in in people's lives then to understand that you have an effect on, on how you see the world and what you said about like I've never seen myself as a role model like I think I'm still a baby to be honest but I'm actually 23 and there probably are people um, yeah. Yeah. looking up to me so I yeah. guess I, I need to be more aware of that yes. as well. Mm-hmm. Okay the final thing I'm just going to ask you guys because again, we see this, it's almost like a, a gap, a divide between the older women and the younger women. How can we repair that, the relationship where we don't see each other's competition, we don't see each other as, we don't come across, then we don't come across as being judgy. So mm-hmm. What can we do to repair the relationship where, the, where, where maybe it needs to be repaired? Um... I think similarly with Ife, because I've had some really cool aunties, um, there's one particular auntie that I think when I was 14 or 15, she trusted me with her information, free of charge. Um, I remember seeing being in her car and, you know, I was massaging her shoulders and so another auntie came into the car and so they spoke in Yoruba and I understand Yoruba quite well. And so 
they were talking about like just a variety of things and so the second auntie turned noticing me in the car and said oh do you feel comfortable talking about this saying it in Yoruba of course do you feel comfortable talking about this in front of her and the auntie turned around and said yes she's my sister I don't see her as an as just a niece I see her as my younger sister yeah. and that changed the trajectory of how I treat young people um people that are younger than me now in regards to um bridging the gap honestly I think it requires healing that adult that auntie to go through some form of healing internally because it 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 I don't know what trend transition um I don't know what transition my auntie went through for her to I mean she she's basically my second mother but for her to say she's my younger sister mm. that that was humbling so in in terms of bridging the gap it requires a lot of a lot of humility a lot of transparency a lot of um accountability right. and a lot of ownership that we are not your and, I, and I'm generalizing just saying, by saying we. Um, we are not your whipping dogs. We're not your, um, we're not your, your, your verbal punching bags. Like just because people kept success at this level and, and made it so that, okay, they have to become housewives or, you know, they have to make a sacrifice. It should not, it should not now mean that we should suffer for that decision. Right. So that humility, that, that, that accountability, that ownership that, you know what, let this young person learn from me. There's um, one auntie and, or rather one pastor and, you know, she, she pours out, I mean, there's like a Friday prayer session that we do and she pours out, she really pulls out and it's like if you if the older generation could just allow us see from a transparency point of view from an honest point of view i'm pretty sure a lot of us will not make the same mistakes um and and it's not from a place of do what i tell you mm. but actually learn from what i what i my own experiences but we have a very instructive spirit i mean nigerian culture or african culture is very like do or else yeah but if you teach and if you teach to us for, with with your experiences i mean um even though i learned a new translate a new translation of you know the the scripture that says we ever came here by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony that 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 testimony part is crucial for us because we're reading okay the red flags avoid this avoid that but what does that really look like what does a narcissist really look like we're seeing these definitions in books we see we're hearing it oh you're hearing people say i married or not that they married god forbid i'm not married a narcissist <laughs> but they married a narcissist yes. and then you're like okay and then a guy now comes and woos person a and is so like fixated on outward appearance right. and then repeats the same cycle. So break it down. Mm -hmm. What made this person a narcissist? What made this person abusive? Yeah. Don't just tell us, yeah. actually illustrate it to us. Wow. And then we will, you know, make better decisions. So yeah. Love that. Love that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ifem, what can we do? No, that was perfect. Perfectly said. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure I have much to add. That was that was really well said. <laughs> well said, really well said. Thank you so much, both of you. I really do appreciate you both mm -hmm. for coming and sharing and being vulnerable. And um, yes, hopefully we will get you back. Have you guys back when, especially with the guys? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm ready to tear shit. Well, yeah, as you have to <laughs> ask them why they think that <laughs> yes. like they're the way that they are. Because I, yes. I really just want to know like, <laughs> more, like genuinely why. <laughs> well, you know, I think I, I can't remember who said it. I think it was one of you. I, I, at the end of the day, we'll probably find out that it's um, peer pressure. Just what I wanted to be like the guys, because mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. some of them are quite decent, but mm -hmm. this is how they've seen their friends do it. So they just mm -hmm. think, oh, it's the thing to do. If you want to say, girl, you have to, you know, you have to man up. You know? But mm -hmm. it's, it's not decent at all. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be lovely to 
have them come and have their say. They will agree to. <laughs> they will agree to come. So thank you so much, ladies. Can we show them some love again? Please, folks, and let's tell them oh. love. <laughs> Yay. Oh. Thank you so much for everyone who stayed on. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's a sad culture. It's a sad culture. Kindness is weakness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I think, every time I do hang a cafe, I always just say, there's so many things that we need to change in society. So many. But the bottom line, it, it starts with us. So if we know better, then we do better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would say one thing that I'm trying to do with, with the um, within my circle of influence with yeah. the different roles that I, I play in my community is that I try to give to the to those that are younger than me what I benefited from. So I did not grow up in a household whereby age was a number or age was a fixation. So for me, it's a case of, yes, I might be 28, but I can still learn from you. Yeah. Um, and my mom is the same way. My dad is the same way too. And so it saddens me when I see a lot of my age mates do this whole, um, they bring age into, into the equation because it ruins. And I always say, where in the Bible did anyone successfully convince God to bless them on the merits of age? Sarah, <laughs> Sarah reminded God. Sarah reminded God about her age, and God said, "Okay, I still did His thing." You know, age, age genuinely is not. It should not be a blocker for 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 receiving wisdom. I mean, Jesus was older, yeah. of course, because being son of God, but then. When he was on the earth, he was younger. Yeah, yeah. And to see that 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 play out is it's crazy to me. But yeah, you still see a lot of people carry agents over their head. And then also the other part is is whatever standards you put out there, people will judge you by, and you only have yourself to blame. So if you put your age out there, they will judge you. Yeah. Oh, you're not married at this age. Oh, you haven't accomplished this at this age and it's your fault. It really is your fault because you carried age on your shoulders and you've allowed it block a lot of things that would have just been easier for you. So yeah. And you know, like I personally believe that you can learn from anyone, whether it's a mm-hmm. six year old or child. And even mm-hmm. Jesus said, Be like a child anyway. Child, yeah. You can learn from a child, you can learn and those around me know that. I'm always asking, if you know, I would can you help me with this? <laughs> You know, never be ashamed to ask. Never be ashamed to learn from others. Because that's the mm-hmm. way you can grow anyway. Because we don't know one knows it all. Oh, yeah. No one knows it all. So, anyway, thank you, ladies. I'm the bless thank y'all, you. folks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us. It's been a wonderful conversation. And we'll see you again pretty soon. Ciao. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>